Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will see some of the important methods available on integer value. Let us begin with converting the integer value to an binary equivalent. To convert an integer value to binary equivalent, we can use the bin method. Here I have and I am converting this integer value to binary equivalent using the bin method. And then integer value to be converted. Let us see the documentation for this bin method using shift plus tab. It returns the binary representation of an integer value. Let us press shift and then tap twice to see the documentation. So here we can see how they have converted the integer value to an binary equivalent, any possible integer value. Let us run this rel and see the binary equivalent of the integer value 24 with base 10. To find the number of bits necessary to represent the integer value, we can use the bit length method. So integer value n that is 24 and then on this we can apply bit underscore length. Let us see what is the result 5 and let us count the number of bits 0 1 sorry 0 1 2 3 4. Uh, remember that in python the index starts from 0 or counting starts from 0. So in actual we need to count like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are 5 bits necessary to represent the integer value 24. And the next method is bit underscore count. This method will return the number of ones in the binary representation of the absolute value of an integer. So this is also known as the population count. Let us see the count and how it works. Let us run this cell and see the number of ones in the binary representation of the absolute value of an integer. So we are getting an error integer object has no attribute bit count. Sometimes if we get an error like this, just open the Python IDLE and in this Python IDLE means the Python interpreter just type the codes for which we got an error. So here n is equal to 24. Let us uh, represent in the form of binary we've got 0 b 1 1 0 0 0 let us count the number of ones in the binary representation of this integer value that is 24 sorry this is bit underscore counter bit 
underscore count. So we got two. Let us use the negative. number it will first convert this negative value to an object value and then returns the number of ones the binary representation of an absolute value of the integer if you observe this binary number we have two ones in this binary representation 1 1 and then we have three zeros three zeros and two ones let us continue working with the remaining methods two underscore bytes this method returns an array of bytes representing an integer it returns an array of bytes representing an integer takes the length and byte order as two arguments length is nothing but length of bytes object to use and byte order means the byte order used to represent the integer if byte order is big the most significant byte is at the beginning of the byte if byte order is little the most significant byte is at the end of the byte array. And sign determines whether whose complement is used to represent the integer. If sign is false and a negative integer is given, an overflow error is raised. Let us run this cell and see how the integer value is represented using an array of bytes. Next we have int dot from underscore bytes. It returns the integer represented by the given array of bytes. So two underscore bytes returns an array of bytes representing an integer. Whereas from underscore bytes returns the integer represented by the given array of bytes. It's an opposite of the underscore byte. For example, here let us use the same array of bytes which is generated just now in from underscore bytes and let us use the byte order as big and keeping the sign is equal to false as it is so we got 24 as expected let us see what happens if we use byte order is equal to little. We got 6144. And if we use byte order is equal to big and signed is equal to true instead of false, we get minus 1024. Next we have as underscore integer underscore ratio method. This method returns a pair of integers whose ratio is exactly equal to the original integer and with a positive denominator. For example, here we have 23 which is assigned to the variable n which is nothing but an integer value now in dot as underscore integer underscore ratio. So look at here. It results in the form of 23 divided by 1. So here ratio means it will first check for the two numbers. 
which results the integer value 23 after representing in the form of a ratio let us see for example one big number that is 233 and i will represent 233 comma 1 33 possible ratio for the integer value 233 possible pair of integers whose ratio is exactly equal to the original integer value let us see with the 2.4 sorry 2.5 and here we can see it is in the form of 5 divided by 5 divided by 2 is nothing but 2.5 it is one possible ratio if we multiply this 5 by 2 by 2 with the denominator and numerator we will get another uh, ratio like 10 divided by 4 so it will return a possible pair of integers whose ratio is exactly equal to the original integer value so 2.5 can be represented as 5 by 2 or 10 by 4. Here it is represented using 5 by 2. 5 comma 2. Next let us look at the hexadecimal method. This method convert an integer number to a lowercase hexadecimal string prefixed with 0x. So g 0x is used to represent the hexadecimal number. So, hexadecimal equivalent of the integer value 24 is 0x18. And next we have octal. Octal method is used to convert an integer number to an octal string prefixed with 0o. Let us run this cell and see the results. Yes, 0 over the actual equivalent of 24 is nothing but 30, 30. Hexadecimal value 30. Suppose if you want to see the identity of an object, means the memory allocation where it has been stored, we can use the ID, ID method returns. The memory location where the integer value has been stored or any variable has been stored. Here, variable n, which has the value 50, the integer value, and it is located at the memory location with last four numbers 2176. Python allocates each and every variable at specific memory location. Next we have length function. This function returns the length of an object whether it may be a floating point number, string or integer value. But in order to get the number of numerical values in a particular integer we need to first convert the integer value to an string value. So here I have assigned this number, one particular random number to an integer value n. And then I am converting using the string value. And then I am counting the total number of numeric values in the integer value. So length of the integer value is 11. 1, 2, 3, up to 11. Next, we have the built-in max function. This max function, when we use with the list of integers, will return the maximum value in that list. For example, here in this list 1, 2, 3, 90, 40, the maximum value is 90. Similarly, the minimum function will return the minimum value in the list of integers we use. Next, we have order method, O or D. 
if you have a string representing one unicode character this ORD will return an integer representing the unicode point of that character for example let us consider the unicode character a and use ORD on this unicode character we got the integer value 97 which represents the unicode character a so that is the meaning return an integer representing the unicode code point of that character so this is the unicode point so another word to say the integer value in the form of an unicode point which represent the unicode character a means in ascii characters the unicode character a is represented using the integer value 97 so this is the simplest meaning for example ascii character a as unicode point with the integer representation as 65 so look at here ascii character a we represent ascii character with the literal string means augmenting leading b with the string value that is a let us see what are the unicode points for the unicode characters b c and d using the ord so for a we have 97 we have unicode point 99 and for b we have unicode point 100 you can repeat this up to check and see what is the unicode point for the last uh, alphabet that is g is 122 let us check whether it remains same for the capital letters or not sorry For capital letters, the Unicode point starts from 65. And ends at 90. For small letters, the Unicode point starts from 97. 